Round of applause for everyone who have made it through the traf traffic jam, really. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. Everyone settled in? Everyone at the lunch? Yes, we're good. Great. It's okay, you can talk. It's not a problem. Everyone had the lunch, yes? Yeah, yeah I, I'll be honest with you. Bangladesh traffic jam is, it's an animal on its own, isn't it? It's great. I mean, but I'll tell you this. Bangladesh is the only country that in a traffic jam, they sell popcorns. <laughs> what sort of a movie am I watching? Doesn't even make sense. Now, I, do you know what I really like about Bangladesh traffic jam? It's the girls that are crossing the street and they have this command. It's like they're a superhero. They just go. <laughs> I am not stopping my car because you're doing this. I'm stopping because you're in front of my car. It's that simple. But I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I really don't know why I'm here today. I mean, uh, we, we're having great speakers. I mean, uh, we've got Iqbal Bhai who's saving the tigers. <laughs> saving the tigers. Wow. I mean, let's be honest. I feel that the only way to save the tigers is if we start naming the tigers to cricket players. <laughs> There's going to be one tiger, all the villagers are going to go, oh, no, he's not going to eat now. He's taking six months off. He's the greatest tiger ever. He's just taking six months off. And the little ones are going to be called Muminul and Mushfikur for obvious reasons. And there's going to be one tiger that's going to be behind a bush. He's doing something funky. We don't know, but we know he's very happy. <laughs> Rubel. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, let me talk about myself now, since we've all warmed up. Um, I remember when I was 13 years old, I was sent to a boarding school. It was in Singapore. And over there, I was made fun of something. And by now, you can tell that it was because of my height. I'm not the tallest. It's OK. I have an advantage. Every time I come on a stage, the stage looks bigger. Everyone's like, oh, wow, this is a huge stage. We didn't notice before. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I remember in Singapore, the first time I got made fun of my height was this Singaporean guy goes, hey, Ashik. Good morning to you. Well, you so short. <laughs> Whoa. Well, you so short that a Chinese noodle is taller than you are. <laughs> what? I'm like, can I have my breakfast? He goes, no, 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 I'm not done yet. I need to tell you more. Because <laughs> you so short that you need a ladder to climb another ladder. <laughs> what? I was not the coolest. I remember when everyone was going like, hey man, we're gonna be cool, we're gonna be black. Everyone was like, yo, what's up? What's up, dog? How you been? I thought African was going full African. So I started copying the Nigerians. So when someone came up to me, I said, you say what is up? <laughs> You say what is up, but what you are doing is putting your people down. <laughs> and they're like, no, dude, what's up? But I, I got this accent from my Nigerian friend. He made fun of me the worst way. He goes, Ashik, you are so small that my thing is bigger than you. <laughs> I apologize to all the elderlies that are here today. This is going to get much worse. <laughs> As soon as I finished high school, I went to London to study law. And um, I realized that the only way I can get out of trouble was by saying very cowardly things in a tough way. So when someone goes like, hey, I'm going to beat you up. I'm like, oh, yeah, you better catch me first. <laughs> to confuse them, man. And as I started studying law, I started developing my stand-up career. By now, you've already understood that by the laughter. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I remember um, I was performing one day, and this guy, this white East Ender guy, just gets up and goes, Oi, you got six siblings, blood. I'm like, excuse me, sir. Just because I'm from a developing country does not mean I've got a big family. We believe in conservation. We believe in protecting the population. He goes, no, blood. I meant seven dwarves. You one of them. <laughs> oh, sure, why not? 
I started beginning, I, I graduated and I went, to my, I went to bar. I started becoming a barrister. I started studying for it. And there I met people I had never seen. I've, I've seen Bangladeshis who have far more, you know, regal than us. He, they, I, I could not relate to them. I remember one guy came, coming up to me and goes, hello, Ashik. I'm like, okay, you're Bangladeshi. He goes, yes, what a Barbie morning. I'm like, Barbie? Because would you like some teas and scones for breakfast? I'm like, dude, are you British? He goes, no, but I do travel on British Airways. <laughs> but you see, I never knew what to do. Like I, I, I saw, I, you know, I've seen a few girls over here that talk like American, you know? They're just, oh my God, you're like, so whatever. <laughs> oh my God, why are the people going for lunch right now? It's like so late. But you know, this can only work if they're Bangladeshi, because if they say this in Bengali, it won't make any sense. Hi, Rick Khoda, to be a camel kitchen. What? What? I came back, I started practicing law in, um, in Dhaka. I realized that my comedy career is not going anywhere. Might as well come and practice. So I started practicing really hard, and I was doing really well. I remember. Um, once the judge went, Asik, where is your brief? Why aren't you carrying it? I said, sir, I am wearing it. No. <laughs> That's a bad joke? Okay. <laughs> but, and then uh, as I started practicing, I got really good at it. And then suddenly um, I had to tell my father that I'm a comedian. So there I was with my father and said, dad, I'm a comedian. He wasn't shocked. He said, make sense? You are a joke. <laughs> <laughs> My father was very strict. They're very conservative. And it's not their fault. It's how they, they came about, you know? I, I don't blame them. Um, I remember when I was young, my father used to tell me off. I, I can see some of them who will understand what I'm saying. My father used to go, Ashley, why don't you wake up in the morning? I'm like, father, it comes too early. <laughs> That's why. I remember my father was once explaining how, why I should do good work, why I should be a good person. He said, Ashik, there are two angels. One's on your right, the other's on your left. When you do all the good things, he will write it down. When you do all the bad things, he will write it down. So from now on, Ashik, what should you do? Dad, every time I do something bad, I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> Can't write anything down. <laughs> Done. I still remember that slap. So, my father, we realized that my father suddenly fell ill. We took him to, that's a really polite thing to do to have your cell phone on. Um, I remember um, we went to the doctor, and the doctor said, um, Mr. Ahmed, uh, you have a 70% block on your heart. Now, my dad being competitive said, that's nothing. I could have done better. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is not a competition. 70 is good for now. So he, he, I never got to understand where he came from. I had to do my own thing. So as soon as he got unwell, I suddenly got into the business, the one he had. And he was selling bed sheets. Strange. But I had no idea about that shit. And there I was within a month in France talking to this buyer for a tender for buying bed sheets or selling bed sheets. And I had no idea what to do. So this French guy comes up to me and he goes, Monsieur Ahmed, you know how French people talk. Good. Monsieur Ahmed, uh, why must we sell your bed sheet? What is so good about it? I went, I had no idea about bed sheet. I had no idea what to say. So then I started thinking quickly. I said, okay, France, Paris, Eiffel Tower, love, lust, I have got it. I said, miss you. My bed sheet is so good, you won't sleep on it. You will sleep with it. We recorded our biggest loss that year. <laughs> As you can tell by now, I am uh, single. Surprise. I had a girlfriend, 
recently we had a breakup. Um, she was the love of my love. She was the love of my life. I want to give her everything. I had, she had my heart, she had my soul, she had my everything. But then she asked for my Facebook password. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm like, baby, I, 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 uh, I don't know, I shouldn't give it to you, but you know, just calm down for a bit. Because I'll tell you this, guys will know here that we are not afraid to show if we're talking to girls. It's what the conversation we have with our guys that we're worried about. Because <laughs> if a girl sees that, we're like, you're a bloody monster, man. But yeah, we hide that. And I remember, like, even with all my relationships, it was very tough. My girlfriend once said, Ashik, you're only interested in my body. I said, baby, that's all I can reach. <laughs> I can't go any higher than that. When my girlfriend called me baby, she meant it. <laughs> that's how... Scary, man. I remember my, my girlfriend was frustrated. She was, Ashik, you have grow up. I'm like, I'm trying. I'll be more serious. He goes, no, grow up. Please grow up. I got so desperate, I started rubbing horlicks on my feet. <laughs> Didn't work. But what next? What next for me? I realized that as, and as much as I'm getting the laughter, I'm enjoying. But what do I do afterwards? What is the point of this? And that's when I started understanding that my comedy does not end with just the laughter. I need to do something more. And what I decided was that I started a charity where instead of coming in with money to buy the tickets, you bring one copy and stationaries and all the collection goes to an underprivileged school. Because as far as I've done so far, what I've told about my life, I've talked about my insecurities. I've talked about my failures and work. I've talked about my lack of relationships. And I've talked about my consistent way of failing. But I have found a way to channel it in a positive way. And I feel that most of you in here have something within you that you can use it in a positive way. It doesn't matter how much. It doesn't matter how long you spend on it. But you just have to be positive about it and use it for the greater purpose. I believe that with my model, you won't be famous. You will not be popular on Facebook or social media or anything else. But what you will have is a sense of fulfillment, that what you're doing is making a difference, be that may in a small way, but it's making a difference. I'll end with a quote. It's by a great philosopher called Joker. And it was from the movie Dark Knight. Great philosopher. Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Well, I believe if you're brilliant at something, why care what you're doing it for? My name is Ahmed Ashik. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.